The last part about Gen. We are going to talk about is a magical application of Gen. What kind of magical application is this? This is to use Gon. For unsupervised learning. You often hear people say. Gen can be used for. Unsupervised learning. I am going to tell you now. How to use Gen in unsupervised learning. So far. What we have talked about. Is supervised learning. We want to train a network. The input of the network is called X and the output is called Y. We need paired data to train such a network. But you may encounter a situation that we have a bunch of X and a bunch of Y, but X and Y are not a pair. In this situation, is there any way to train the network with this kind of data? These kinds of unpaired data are called unlabeled data or unmarked data. As for how to use these unlabeled data, there are two examples in homework 3 and homework 5. Let's just put this thing how to do semi supervised learning within labeled data in the homework. You can come if you are interested in how much help semi supervised learning can bring. But these methods are more or less still need some paired data, whether it is the pseudo labeling in homework 3 or the back translation in homework 5. In homework 3, you have to train a model first. This model can help you provide pseudo labels. If there are not many paired data at the beginning, your model will be bad. You have no way to produce a good pseudo label. As for back translation, you also need a model of back translation, and then you can do back translation. So, for the method in homework 3 and the one in homework 5, we still need some paired data. But suppose we encounter a more difficult situation. It's because we don't have any paired data. What should I do? You might ask in what situation? Do I have no paired data? I can always find a student worker to help me label some data. But there may be less paired data. When will there be no paired data at all? Let's take an example here. For example, image style conversion. Suppose I want to train a deep network. The network needs to convert the picture in domain X to the picture in domain Y. The picture of domain X is the avatar of the real person. The picture of domain Y is the avatar of the animated character. The conversion of an avatar from a real person to an animated character is called image style conversion. The real person's avatar is in domain X. The animated avatar is in domain Y. The conversion of things in domain X to things in domain Y is image style conversion. In this example, we might have no paired data, right? If you want paired data, for example, you have to take a photo for Yui Aragaki first. Take a photo for Yui Aragaki. Then we draw the anime version of Yui Aragaki. Then you could use it to train network. This is obviously too expensive. Even part-time worker can't do this. So for the image style transform, you may not have any paired data. In this situation, is there any way to train a network? Input AX to generate a Y. This is what GAN can do for us. Then we will see how to use GEN to learn in the situation where there is no any paired data. This is what we were talking about before. In unconditional generation, when you see the architecture of the generator, the input is a Gaussian distribution. The output may be a complex distribution. Now we slightly change our mind. We are not going to say the input is Gaussian distribution. We say it is the distribution of X domains pictures. That output we refer it to the distribution of Y domains pictures. Is it possible for us to train such a generator? The input is the distribution of X domains pictures. The output is the distribution of Y domains pictures. It's over if we could make it. Then we successfully solve this question. You train a network which can take in an X domain data and transform it to the Y domain data. Is there a way to do this? It seems not so difficult. You can apply the IDES of the original GEN. In the original GEN we said that we sample a vector from Gaussian, input it to the generator. Then we also said that at the beginning. In fact, you don't have to sample from Gaussian. As long as there is a way to sample it from any distribution. We chose Gaussian only because we know the Gaussian formulation. We can sample it very easily. Now what should we change? If we input the distribution of X domain, we just need to change it to sample from the distribution of domain X and it's over. Can you sample from the X domain? 
Yes, you can start from the face photos. And pick one out of the real faces randomly. Suck as a nerd, and it is over. You can sample a piece of chur. From X domain. And input this picture to the generator. Let it generate another picture. Generate a picture of. Another distribution. Then how to transform it. To the Y domain distribution? We need two to three discriminators. Then let these discriminators. See a lot of pictures of Y domain. So it can distinguish whether it is. A Y domain picture. If it sees a Y domain picture, gives it a high score. If it sees the picture that is not Y domain. Gives it a low score if it is not animation. Then it's done. You might ask what's the difference from. The training process of original gen? There is no difference. If you want do it by yourself. In that homework. Just remember that in original homework. The input of the Gaussian generator. Is sampled from. Gaussian distribution. Now, remember to change the sampling method. We sample a picture out. From the face of a real person. That's it. But think it twice. Simply apply the original Gen training. Generator and discriminator. Seems to be not enough, right? Why? Because what our current discriminator. Has to do is to make this generator. Output a picture of the Y domain. The generator may learn. To output the graph of the Y domain. But does the image of the Y domain it outputs. Have to be related to input? You don't have any restrictions. To ask your generator to do this. Your generator may just take this picture. As Gaussian noise. And ignores anything it sees. No matter what you enter. As long as it outputs. An animated character. The discriminator thinks it does a good job. It's actually over, right? Hence, it is obviously not enough. If we only apply this general GAN approach. By changing the input distribution. From Gaussian to the X domain image. And train one generator. And then train a discriminator. Obviously, it's not enough. Because the generator you trained. Can generate the avatar of the animated character. But it has no relationship with. The real photo input. This is not what we want. What should I do? How to solve this problem? How to strengthen the relationship between the input and the output? This generator completely ignores the input. You will find that, when we were in conditional GAN, we have seen the same problem. When talking about the conditional GAN, I specifically mentioned this problem. Suppose your discriminator only looks at Y. Then it may ignore the generator's input. The result is not what we want. But here, if we want to learn from the unpaired data, we have no way to apply the idea of conditional GAN directly. Because I just said that, we have paired data in conditional GAN. We can use these paired data to train the discriminator. But today, we don't have paired data. We have no way to come up with paired information to tell the discriminator what the right combination of the X and the Y is. We don't have this kind of information. How to solve it? Here I have an idea called cycle GAN. In cycle GAN, we will train two generators. The job of the first generator is to turn the X domain picture into the Y domain picture. The job of the second generator is to restore a picture of the Y domain back to the X domain picture. During training, we added an additional goal today for the input picture. After we switch it from the X domain to the Y domain and switch it back from the Y domain to the X domain, the output picture is similar to the input picture. After two conversions, the input and output should be as close as possible. How to make the two pictures as close as possible? This is so simple. This is a picture. It's actually a vector, right? Two pictures are just two different vectors. So the closer the distance between the two vectors, the better. We want the two pictures to be as similar as possible. It is called cycle gone. Because of the cycle here means to transform from X to Y and then transform from Y back to X. So the output is generated from the input with two transformations. The closer the input is to the output, the better. This is called the consistency of the cycle. Now we have three networks. The first generator converts from X to Y. And second generator converts from Y to X. The discriminator's job is to determine whether the output of the blue generator looks like a picture in Y domain. So what is the difference? After adding the orange generator from Y to X, 
After adding it, the blue generator in the front can't mess up anymore. It can't just create some random nonsense. That has nothing to do with the input. Suppose the input is an otaku and the output is kagaya. This picture here is shinomiya kagaya for the second generator, which takes kagaya as its input. How does it even know that? It should transform kagaya into an otaku. It has no way to know what the original input picture looks like. It doesn't even know the original input. In order to allow the second generator to successfully restore the original picture, the pictures produced by the first generator can't be too different from the input. So if the input is an otaku, at least the output should be something like a boy wearing glasses. So here we have a boy wearing glasses. Shinpachi. Then the second generator may be able to restore the original input. So the cycle gone at least forces the first generator to output something that is somehow related to the input picture. But there is a problem here. We can only guarantee that the input and output has some sort of relationship. What if this relationship is not exactly what we want? If that is the case, maybe the second generator will learn some weird conversion. For example, if the input to the first generator is a man with glasses, and the first one learned to wipe off the glasses, and turn it into a mole, then the second generator might have learned to turn a mole into glasses. This can still satisfy cycle consistency, as it successfully restored the input from the first generator's output. Let me give a more extreme example. Assuming that the first generator learned to horizontally flip the picture, the second generator only needs to learn to flip it again to restore the input. So cycle consistency seems to be not enough for a cycle gone to ensure that the input and output faces look similar because the machine will might learn some weird conversions as long as the second generator can convert it back. Will it happen? It is possible. What should we do? There is no special solution temporarily. But I can tell you that this situation is rare. When you use cycle gen, when you use cycle gen, you will find that input and output are similar most of the time. Moreover, in practice, even if you don't have a second generator and you don't use cycle gen, you can usually do this style conversion successfully. With a normal gone, you will find that network is actually very lazy. Given a picture, it usually wants to output something very similar. It doesn't want to do the complicated conversion, such as turning some glasses into a mole. It doesn't like such troublesome things. Generating glasses if you have glasses may be an easier choice for it. So, this problem is not big practically. Input and output will be similar. But in theory, there seems to be no guarantee that the input and the output pictures must be very similar, even if you add cycle consistency. So this may be the gap between the practice and the theory. In short, although cycle gen does not guarantee that input and output must be very similar, you will find that the input and output are usually very similar, and they are only different in style. Furthermore, this cycle gen can be bidirectional. What does that mean? We just have a generator, which can transform a picture in Y domain to an image in X domain. We first convert the image in X domain to Y, then turn Y back to X. When training cycle gen, you can do training in another direction at the same time. That is, you use this orange generator to transform a picture in Y domain to the one in X domain, and then use the blue generator to transform the picture in X domain back to the original Y domain. At the same time, input and output should be as close as possible. Also, you have to train a discriminator. This discriminator is in X domain. It is used to check whether an image looks real or not. This green discriminator should check the similarity between the output picture and the real faces. On the contrary, this orange generator is going to cheat. This DX is on the left side. This together is cycle gen. In addition to cycle gen, you may have heard about many other gen that can do style conversion. For example, disco gen, dual gen. What's the difference? It's actually the same. You will find that disco gen, dual gen, and cycle gen are actually the same things. They have the same idea. However, they are proposed by different teams. 
Nearly simultaneously, they came up with almost the same idea. You can find the time that three articles uploaded to archive are March 2017, April 2017, and March 2017 respectively. The cool thing is that different teams, at almost the same time, came up with almost the same idea. In addition to the cycle GEN, there is another more advanced version that can do image style transfer. It is called the star GEN. The cycle GEN can only transfer between the two styles, while the star GEN can transfer between multiple styles. That is not the key point that I want to elaborate on today. Accordingly, we just stop this topic here. As for transferring from real face images to animated face images, can we make it today? Actually, we can. There is a link in the upper right corner. The link will direct you to a website made by a Korean team. You can upload a picture to the website, and the website will transfer your image into an animated style. Actually, they did not use the cycle GEN. They utilized a more advanced GEN technology. We won't go into details here. I just put a link here for your reference. Here I will show you how the webpage does. Dot. I don't know if you know this. This is Yui Aragaki, which is your wife. You should know her. This website will turn your wife into an animated character. The result is here. Your wife will then look like this. You will find that the machine do learn some animated characteristics. For example, it make the eyes bigger. In reality, the eyes are actually not very big. After being transferred into animated style, the eyes become much bigger than before. However, it fails to transfer in some time. For example, this is the former president of the United States. The result after conversion looks like this. One of the eyes is big, while the other one is small. It fails to transfer in some time. This technology can be applied to other tasks. You can also perform text style transfer too. For example, turn a negative sentence into a positive one. Of course if you want to train a model that takes a sentence as input and output a sentence. The model has to take a sequence as input and output a sequence. So it is a sequence to sequence model. You might want to use the transformer architecture we built in homework 5 to do this text style conversion problem. What we did in homework 5 is translation, in which we take a language as input and output another language. As for the text style transfer, you also take a sentence in and transfer it into another style. How do we do text style transfer? It's exactly the same as the cycle again. First, you need some training data, including sentences with negative style and sentences with positive style. Suppose you want to turn negative sentences into positive sentences. The style conversion problem would be turning negative sentences into positive sentences. It is actually not that difficult to collect a data set that contains a bunch of positive and negative sentences. We can simply use a web crawler to achieve that. For example, our data was collected from the website PTT. We were able to collect a large amount of data by labeling the upvoting comments as positive sentences and the downvoting comments as negative sentences. It's just that the sentences weren't paired. We don't know how to turn a positive sentence into a negative sentence, and vice versa. We don't have that kind of data. At the very least, we can still obtain plenty of positive and negative sentences. Next, we simply apply the cycle gone method. Since the method is completely identical to cycle gone, we won't go into details. We now have a discriminator. Suppose we want to turn a negative sentence into a positive sentence. It's the discriminator's job to determine whether the positive sentence generated by the generator does indeed look like a positive sentence then another generator is required so there are two generators in total the second generator has to learn to turn the positive sentence back to the original negative sentence we have to achieve cycle consistency so after a negative sentence is turned into a positive one we should be able to turn it back to the original negative sentence you might wonder how we can calculate the similarity between two sentences. An image is easier to understand. Since it is a vector, the distance between two vectors can represent their similarity. How about sentences? I'll leave it for you to find out. If you're interested in that. Another problem is that the sequence to sequence model outputs texts. Didn't we just say that? There will be problems if we pass texts to the discriminator? 
Yes, it's going to be problematic. We'll have to solve it by reinforcement learning. What does the result look like? Here is a real demo of that. We actually collected comments from PTT and labeled them into positive and negative sentences, depending on whether it is upvoting or downvoting. This way, the model can turn a negative sentence into a positive sentence. Here's how it looks like. When it takes, stomach aches, didn't sleep enough, feeling down, as the input. It outputs, happy birthday, slept well, feeling awesome. When it takes, I even want to go to work now, how pathetic, as the input. It outputs, I even want to go to sleep now, how cool. It's quite powerful. It knows that the opposite of going to work is going to sleep. Pretty smart, right? When it takes, this sucks. I saw a flasher while I was eating barbecue, as the input. It outputs, hell yeah. I saw a handsomer while I was eating barbecue. It invented a phrase by itself. Turning the word, flasher, into, handsomer. Without any idea of what it is talking about. Since this training, is completely unsupervised, and only negative and positive sentences were given, sometimes it makes very strange mistakes. For example, it turns the sentence, my stomach is hurting bad, into, my happy birthday is going good. Then you will find that although the machines sometimes generate some nonsense, some patterns can still be observed. For example, any abdomen symptoms, like stomach ache or abdominal pain, will all be translated to happy birthday. I don't know how the machine relates. Abdomen symptoms with happy birthday. You may wonder if this machine is of any value or usefulness. I can tell you, it's totally useless. But if you bear a grudge against your boss, who often treats you badly, you can add this system to your earphones. And all of a sudden, you can live a better life, since all the criticisms now become compliments. There are actually many other applications that make use of such text style transfer technique, besides negative to positive sentiment transfer. For example, suppose I have a lot of long documents on hand, along with some abstracts that are from different sources. Namely, they are unpaired. The machine is able to learn text style transfer. With these unpaired articles, you can make the machine learn to summarize a long document into a short summary. It can learn how to write more concisely and learn to summarize long articles into short sentences. Even more incredibly, the same idea can be applied to unsupervised machine translation. Then what is unsupervised machine translation? The data consists of some English sentences and some Chinese sentences. None of the sentences are paired. This is different from your homework 5. In homework 5, you are provided with paired data. In homework 5, each English sentence is paired with its Chinese translation. But an unsupervised translation task means there's no paired data at all. Your data can be some crawled Chinese and English sentences, possibly from different sources on the internet. You can still make the machine learn Chinese English translation by directly adopting the aforementioned cycle GAN approach. You may refer to the literature for recent advances in unsupervised machine translation. So far, we've talked about transfer between texts. Can we transfer styles between two different types of data? It is possible. The first such experiment was done by our lab members. Back then, we tried to do unsupervised automatic speech recognition, which is called OSR. What is ASR? Doing ASR means that you need to collect paired data. You have to first collect a lot of speech signals and hire part-time workers to help you transcribe those utterances so that the machines can learn the recognition of a speech. However, it's too expensive to hire transcribers. So we made up our mind to face the challenge of unsupervised ASR. That is, the machine only had access to some speech signals without the corresponding transcription. And the only available text data crawled from the internet had no paired sound files. We directly adopted the cycle GAN approach and checked if the machine could succeed in converting a speech signal into the right text. If you are curious about how low the error rate could be. You can refer to the reference here. This is the end of the GAN part.